Hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Danielle Rochford and I'm a grade seven and eight online teacher. I'm also a Google certified trainer. And for the past few weeks, we've been taking a look at Google Classroom. And now that we've nailed down those basic tasks, knowing how to set everything up and create assignments, add students, all of those different types of things, now we're going to take a look at what are some of the best ways to organize our Google Classroom? Now I want to start off by saying that there is no one perfect way to organize Google Classroom. There are so many different ways that work and really it depends on the teacher and the class. But today I want to take a look at five specific things that we can do to help make our Google Classroom just that little bit more organized to hopefully help it make sense to all of our students and help to make our workflow as the teacher much easier. So the first thing I want to take a look at is removing assignments from the class stream. Now, in uh, my earlier video where we uh, talked about getting these Google Classrooms set up, um, I took you through the different settings, and one of those was uh, to hide the um, assignment notifications from the stream. Um, I actually really do encourage teachers to do this. Um, otherwise, the, the class stream tends to get a little confusing for students because it will be a mix of all of the different assignments that are posted um, as well as any announcements that are made and things like that and and it can get very very confusing for students so I actually recommend that you remove assignments from the class stream the second thing that I would recommend and I talked a little bit about this in last week's video um, is using topics on the classwork page. Um, those topics can come in really, really handy for when it comes to um, making that organization happen. Um, and there are a number of different ways that you can use the topics to organize. So um, for example, you could have weekly topics or um, you could have subject topics or you could have unit topics. Um, really the format that you choose depends on what's going to work best for you and your students. I know for myself, um, I've been teaching online for about 10 years now, and um, five of those years I've been using Google Classroom. And so needless to say, I have experimented with a number of different formats for organization. Um, I have used the, the weekly topics, um, and uh, I've even done by subject topics and the most recent way that I currently um, organize my Google Classroom is by using unit topics. Um, I have found that for myself and for my students um, that is the uh, the format that works the best that helps to sort of make everything fall into place easiest for all of us. Um, and so currently what I do is um, my Google Classrooms, I'll have a different Google Classroom for the different subject areas that I teach. Um, and then on the classwork page, I will divide up the topics by the different units that we will be covering. Okay, and I've mentioned in some of my previous videos that uh, one additional uh, way that I, I organize things is I actually do have different classrooms for the different terms um, as well um, so that I'm able to release all of the work for one specific term for my students at the same time and there's a number of different reasons why I do that and um, I will be tackling that more in detail in another video um, but uh, but needless to say unit topics uh, that's what is working currently for myself and my students. Something else that I would actually really encourage you to do um, is to include a topic called, um, you know, getting started or resources or something of that nature where um, you have a section that you can keep up at the top of the classwork page 
that has all of the, the frequently used resources that students need to access. So whether that be uh, you know, a class syllabus or uh, directions for best practices for how to access different things, or it could even be a link to um, how to get in touch with you for office hours or, or whatnot. So um, those items that students will need to access on a regular basis, it's not just necessarily for one specific assignment, it's uh, throughout the year or throughout the term. Um, I would encourage you to have a topic up at the very top of your classwork page that's sort of like a getting started section for students. Finally, the last thing that I would really encourage you to do, another tip for organizing your, your Google Classroom, is I would actually encourage you to use um, visual cues, some type of visual cue uh, to help students understand you know, what the assignments are. So whether it be, I know in my class I have um, some assignments that are, are practice assignments, so they're not taken for grade, they're practice of different concepts. Um, and then others that are for grade. And so um, if you could have some type of visual cue um, for those different types of assignments, that can be helpful for students as well. Um, one thing that, um, that I will do is um, I will, at the beginning of the assignment in brackets, I will put the type of assignment. So I have checkpoints or um, I have mastery checks, resources. Those are some of the different things that I have. And so in brackets, I will start the assignment that way so that they know exactly what type of assignment it is. Um, I also really like to include emojis um, in the, the titles of topics as well as assignments. And, um, and I do find that that helps to cue students as well visually that way. So um, some of the things I like to use, there's um, different emojis that you can use or like, um, you know, a, a pencil writing on paper or um, just a pencil or even there's different shapes there that you can use. So for example, different colored circles or different colored squares. Um, those are different em emojis that, uh, that I have used in the past as well to help give a visual cue for students um, as to what the different types of assignments might be. So there we go. We have five quick tips there for how we can uh, help to organize our Google Classroom as we're getting it set up. Now, one final item here that I did want to mention, um, I know that this was a quicker video than some of my other tutorial videos, um, but um, Coming up very, very shortly, I am going to be hosting another webinar that is going to be focused specifically on Google Classroom. So if you have questions that you are just dying to have answered, whether it be some of the basics of getting started with Google Classroom to maybe some of the more um, specific creative types of ways that you can use Google Classroom, I am open to all of those different questions. Um, so if you have specific questions um, that you would love to have answered in my next Google Classroom webinar, um, in the description below, I'm going to provide a link to a Google form um, that will provide you the opportunity to share those questions with me so that I can prepare the webinar by answering all of those things that you guys are dying to know. If you found value here today, I certainly do hope that you will consider subscribing can hit that subscribe button down below as well as the bell icon right next to it. That way you'll be sure to get notifications each and every time I upload new content. Have a great day everyone. We'll see you next week.